Some people call it self-denial or self-restraint, but I will not call it self-denial for a reason. But I could live with self-restraint because some adults purposely denied themselves from it because they want to control their bodies. And the reason for not seeing it as self-denial is because some women are being denied by men, while some men are being denied by women. So let us use the word sexual abstinence or celibacy, which is basically a situation in which a person voluntarily or involuntarily restrains his or herself from sex. I mean, not having sex for a period of time. As the pros and cons of it are being discussed a lot, let us look at the effects of sexual abstinence on men's and women's health today after the break. Thank you for joining us today on Healthy Living with Buffer health and nutrition sack show and that's the all i think of learning let's take a break i'll be right back Welcome back. You're watching Health and Nutrition Sack Show on Healthy Living with Booth for TV. Thank you for staying with us. Today's discussion is about sexual health, and our focus will be on the effects of sexual abstinence on men's and women's health. So let's get right into it. You see, how often a person has sex naturally changes from time to time, depending on age, fluctuation in sex drive, and relationship status. Many women enjoy a full and satisfying life without ever having sex. This is what I want you to, to, to know. When someone does not have sex for months or years, they are unlikely to notice any negative physical side effect on their health. Take note of that. However, research shows that having regular sex can result in certain health benefits, including improved immune system function, reduced blood pressure, lower stress levels, and less risk of cardiovascular events. Just like I mentioned in my write-up on WhatsApp, sex is not essential for good health. If you don't have it, it is not a death sentence. Of course, you will not die. But I must tell you it is definitely good for you. There are lots of ugly conversation women especially say when they miss this food so long. Couple that lives apart, I mean, living afar away from each other especially. I say all these complaints as mites because they are not medically and scientifically proven. And what are these complaints? Many women have said to me severally before and after I enter health field that they are inability to have sex for a very long time cause abdominal pain in them. And I said to them, this is just mine. It is not proven medically or scientifically. Why? Because it is my, because abstaining from sex doesn't cause women abdominal pain. The most common reason for lower abdominal pain in women is menstruation. When you are in your period, you're probably not paying attention to your body when you usually have the pain. If the pain is not caused by menstrual pain, by your menstruation, there are things when lower abdominal pain occurs, even though the problem is in the organs that are not in the abdominal cavity. For instance, people can experience issues with their lower lungs or kidneys, which can cause abdominal pain. Definitely, sexual abstinence does not cause pain in either men 
or women. Take it or leave it. Now, some people also said inability to have sex regularly causes, you know, prostate cancer in men if men abstain from sex for a very long time. Yes, yes. this is true. In fact, study confirmed that men with higher frequency of ejaculations may have a lower risk of prostate cancer, which means if men have sex regularly, you are reducing the risk of having prostate cancer. So, if you have not been knocking your wife, or you are a woman, you've been denying your husband of its right. I beg. Both of you should just change your orientation of this ignorance and let the ball start rolling. Start knocking each other. You need it. It's good for your body. Now, if you continue experiencing abdominal pain, note this is not caused by lack of sex. If you are not with your husband, or if with your own, if, even if you are with husband, because we have seen many couples that live together without sex for years, for 10, 20 years, I've seen it. So if you still continue having this pain, abdominal pain, please go for this following test. You want to go for gynecological tests. And what is gynecological test? This includes swabs, um, cervical smells or pelvic ostracide. You can also go for a uh, special blood test for ovarian cancer to check what is going on in your, in your body. Yes. Special blood test for ovarian cancer can also be performed to be on the right part. Another one, endoscopic exam. This is an examination that allows to pass through your anus to check your bowel. And this occurs if a clonic cause is suspected. Another test is called CT scan. This is a computerized topography scan that can detect abdominal ab abnormality. And the last one is ostracin, which can investigate urinary causes. If you continue having pain, abdominal pain, I mean, thinking that because you don't have sex is the cause, it is not the cause. I'm telling you that that doesn't cause, cause me pain. It can cause other things, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but for the abdominal pain, that is not the cause. If you are not in your period and you still experience this pain, abdominal pain, Go for all these tests that I mentioned, period. Now, I know some of you would like to know the benefits of sex, sexual abstinence. Of course, there are many benefits, but I see only one reason out of many benefits why a married adult should abstain from sex, and that is STD prevention. That's the one of the benefits of sexual abstinence. And that can only happen if you don't trust your partner. If you don't trust your partner, your spouse, you want to abstain from sex. Yes. Other than this, all the other benefits are meant to favor the younger adults. I mean, the young, the youth who are not married or the adults who are not married yet and they are not ready to marry. So they want to abstain from sex. And the reason why they want to do that is they want to make sure that they prevent pregnancy and STD, sexual transmitted diseases. They also want to allow it to happen so that it can allow them to wait until they are ready for a sexual relationship. It also helps them to find the right partner. Yes. 
the right partner who doesn't have HIV AIDS, it will also help them in getting the right partner when it comes to their blood group. They don't want to marry, um, uh, I mean, genotype, SS. They want to be very careful and take their time. And why they are doing this, they are, they are preventing themselves from all this. Now, it also helps them to have fun with romantic partners without sex involvement. And the last but not the least is it helps them to focus on schools, careers, or extracurricular activities. All these are the benefits of sexual abstinence. If you want to abstain, these benefits are for those who are not married. Not for those who are married, though. The only reason why those who are married want to abstain from sex is because if you realize that your partner is not to be trusted. If you don't trust your partner, you know that he's doing this, doing that, so you're a baby con. He's fornicating or committing adultery, then you want to abstain from sex. But another thing you want to do, if you want to keep your hope, if your husband comes back home and you want to do it, because you know he's been messing around, you can allow him to do real coat if you want to keep your hope. Because if a man goes out there and come back, to have sex with you, no, he doesn't do it outside. You want to have it. And if you want to deny him, then there's going to be a problem in the house. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that even if you are not going to enjoy it and you still want to keep your home, you have to choose one. You either keep your home, let him have it, and use condom, tell him to use condom. Or you want to lose your home and don't let him have his way. That's it. Two choices. You have to pick one. All right? Let's talk about what you can get. I mean, the benefits of having sex regularly. I just talked about the one that you can get if you don't have sex. Now, if you are having sex regularly, what do you get? What are the health benefits? The physical, the psychological benefits you want to get from having sex regularly. And when I say having sex regularly, I don't mean having it every day. Every minute, every second, because there are some people, eh, it's like food for them. They want to kill you. If you are still breathing, they are going. The, oh my goodness. Please, I'm not talking about that. When I say regularly, I mean one to two times a week. That is enough. That is good enough. Number one health benefit or emotional benefit, um, psychological benefit, Mental benefit, number one is it boosts blood circulation, helps depression, soothes chronic pain, and reaffirms the joy of living. All this I mentioned includes psychological benefit, mental benefit, emotional benefit, even physical benefit. All this I mentioned. It helps depression, suits chronic pain, reaffirm the joys of living and boost your blood circulation. Now, even though it has its own benefits, sexual problems often signal deeper ills, which are low libidos, erectile dysfunction, genital infection, or sexual pain may hide in serious health problems such as diabetes or heart trouble. Now, it is an urban might that a woman's vagina will seal up, close up, or grow a new hymen if a woman does not have sex. If vagina does not see action for a while, it is a might to say that the vagina will close up or will grow anything. Hymen. No, such a thing doesn't happen. Your vagina will not seal up. It will not close up if you don't have sex. Especially when you have had baby before. 
what is going to close it? What is that? No. You probably feel tighter down there because you are nervous or simply not arose enough to have sex. Your vagina doesn't get tighter or regrow the hymen regardless of how long you have stayed. Don't let anybody deceive you that if you don't have sex, it will close up. It will seal up. It says who? No. If you've not had sex in your life, if you are still virgin, that is virgin. But as long as it is broken, it will not seal up again. No, it is not possible. Okay? Now, having sex regularly comes down to hormones. Yes. Even when you are not having sex, your body still produces estrogen and prostatrum. And these hormones keep the vagina walls open and flexible. Just like lotion soothing, soothing um, um, dry hands in the winter time. Estrogen helps moisting and maintaining the vagina rogue. Or the folds that allow the vagina to expand when you are roast. So it is possible for the vagina opening to decrease in size, but this occurs after menopause and following a longer period of time of sex. I mean, following a long sex pause. Over time, postmenopausal women who have a diminished supply of estrogen might notice the diameter of the vagina becoming smaller if they are not engaging in intercourse. If you are in your menopause, if you enter your menopause today, it can cost you to reduce in estrogen. Your, definitely your estrogen will reduce. If your you, if you have a diminished supply of estrogen, you might probably have diameter of the vagina becoming smaller if you don't have sex. And But it doesn't cause pain. And it doesn't make your vagina close off. But the clinical study shows that this usually only happens after about five, um, six, three years or more. Next is anxiety or depression. If you are having sex regularly, you will not have anxiety. You will not have depression. But if you are not having sex, anxiety or depression might set in. And that is why you see many women, when they are not having sex, they, are, they will be so cranky. If your wife is cranky, push her to bed. Give her the food. Ah, Omarani one is going to smile. But if you have not been giving your wife, ah, apart from no food on the table, no food down there too. You know, let me tell you this. This is what women or men don't know. I'll tell you today. And I'm going to get there. Okay, let me wait and get there. I'll tell you. Now, I'm still on anxiety or depression. Having sex releases feel-good brain chemicals. And what are these chemicals? We call it oxytocin and serotonin. This chemical lifts your mood and spirit. Oxytocin and serotonin. Lift your mood and your spirit. So when your system is not producing these brain chemicals in the same amount, it can take a toll on your mental health. Yes. Please don't fret if you are not getting enough sex with a partner. Because this I said that if you don't have 
sex, you are going to have depression because you are not getting oxytocin and serotonin that will make you happy and live your spirit. I, I don't have sex. Oh my goodness, you start being, you know, you, you start fretting up. You don't have to do that. Having orgasm via masturbation can score you the oxytocin and serotonin you need to keep depression and anxiety away. Don't let any pastor deceive you that you must not do masturbation. You must, if you don't do masturbation, how, well, well, how do you want to get all this chemical working in your brain? Do they want you to go and be fornicating if your husband is living far away from you? This is what the pastors need to preach in church. You see, it's only in Africa you will not see a church talking about sex, sexual health. And they will not talk about what you need to know about sex. And let me tell you, all these pastors that are not telling you what you need to know about sex are actually practicing the same thing they don't want you to know. For instance, if a pastor lives away you know, they live apart from their partner and they are so religious, trustworthy to their wives or to their husband. They don't want to, you know, commit adultery. They know how to do it. They must obey. Your pastor must obey me. Are they coming to the PUP to come and tell you this? No. All this I'm talking about, about the brain chemicals, oxytocin and serotonin, your pastor knows about it and they, they know how to get it without fornicating or committing adultery. And their wives live apart from them. Yes. Use your brain. Except if you are ready to double date, Nikonoku. If you are not ready to double date, this is what you can do. As long as the, the, the science says it, and it is proven that you get your oxytocin and serotonin that make you happy through masturbation, you must do it. You can do it. Yes. Another one is, and this is where I'm going, this is where I'm going to tell you when you always have pain. Abdominal pain. This is what happens. And you mix things up like it is because you are not having sex. I'll tell you, this is it. People believe that not having sex can cause cramps. No. What causes cramps is your menstruation. Yet yeah, it causes cramps before and during your period. If some people have sex during during period, during their menstruation, and they enjoy it. Some people cannot do it because of the all these ugly things, all these things. Some people cannot do it. Some do it because they're having cramps. And when you have sex during your period, it reduces your cramps. That is what you don't understand. So people now think, okay, if I don't have it and I'm having cramps, it may be because I don't have sex. See, who told you that? No, a temporary self-restraint, I mean abstinence, can also cause changes in your hormones and vagina discharge. And these changes in tones can lead to vagina dryness, reduced libido, and worsening cramps before and during your period. That is why some people prefer to have sex during their period, their menstruation period. And I want to tell you this, that older women who abstain from sex may even experience vaginal atrophy due to reduced estrogen levels. What is a vaginal atrophy? I've said it multiple times on this show. Vaginal atrophy is the inflammation of the vagina due to tiny and shrinking of the tissues. Yeah, what that means is Tiny, dryness, and inflammation of vagina walls. And that happens when your body has less estrogen, which may cause pain during intercourse. 
Yes. This is not when you are in your period. Mm -mm. If you are not in your period and you dare less estrogen, if you have sex, you may likely have pain during intercourse. This is another one, and this is true because it is confirmed by the science. For men, how often they have sex may be linked to their chances of prostate cancer. But the evidence is mixed. How? Some experts think that sex might actually raise your odds. Odds. O-D-D-S. By possibly exposing you to sexually transmitted diseases that lead to inflammation. But a study that was performed, I think, out on almost 30,000 men showed that these men had lower chances of prostate cancer during their lifetime. Why? Because they ejaculated more than 21 times a month on average compared with those who ejaculated four to seven times a month. So this is where it makes sense up. And I guess that was the reason why the expert says lack of sex may be linked to prostate cancer because those that do it regularly have less risk of having cancer. I mean prostate cancer. Why those who are not having it regularly are linked to prostate cancer? So you want to make sure you are you're doing it regularly. That's just the key word. You could also be dealing with what I call skin hunger. I said this to my boyfriend that skin hunger. He said, what is the meaning of skin hunger? I said, really? Don't worry. I'll tell you. I told him what skin hunger is. I'm going to tell you today. If you are not having sex, you may be dealing with what I call skin hunger. What is skin hunger? You see? There is a reason why doctors encourage humans to have as much skin-to-skin -skin contact with loved ones as possible. Because direct touch of your own skin to your partner's skin conveys emotion. And that can decrease stress and improve self-esteem, potentially even boosting our immune system. Without it, you could be dealing with skin hunger. Yes. Or the body's reaction to a long-term lack of touch. That's another way to understand skin hunger. Yes. Our skin interprets positive touch to boost serotonin levels. So you are more likely to feel happy and healthy. Of course, what is sex is not a form of positive torture. If you are having sex with opposite sex, you must touch each other, right? Yes, that is the positive touching we're talking about. So it is good. Some men will tell you, no, I'm not going to use condom. I like skin to skin. They know what they're talking. Some don't even know what they're getting skin to skin. They're just saying it. They don't know that this give, this, this is what we're talking about. It's called skin hunger. Yeah. They don't know that when you have skin to skin, it improves self-esteem. It decreases stress. They may not even know. They just may be because when they do it with condom, it's going to be painful for them. But if they do it without condom, yes, they feel relaxed. They don't know anything about it. They just want to skin to skin. You will be to because skin to skin because both are said skin to skin improve. I mean, yeah, it boosts your immune system. 
decrease stress, improve your self-esteem, and you want to go and have sex to somebody that have HIV or STD, doing skin to skin, and you hear me? You are on your own. Another thing that can happen is it could get drier down there. I've mentioned it briefly when I was talking about it before. There is a phrase that says, if you don't use it, you lose it. Definitely applies when you stop having sex. Yes, it gets dry, but it will not close up. It will not seal up. It can dry. If you don't do it, it can dry. And if you don't masturbate, you can dry. You're either doing it or masturbating. That's it. For starters, when you remain celibated for a while, I mean, when you abstain from marriage and sexual relations, practically for religious reasons anyway, you will likely experience comfort when you do decide to hook up with someone again. If you haven't gotten it all lately, your vagina might be on the drier side as you go about your regular routine. Dryness on it, all, I mean, is not necessarily a problem, but it can feel uncomfortable for you. It can make you feel uncomfortable. Yes. I know some fake religious people will not like what I'm about to say. And you know why I said fake religious ones? They are doing what they preached. You should not do. So those are hypocrites. Doing what you tell others not to do. That is hypocrisy. Take it or leave it. I'm going to say it. They make time for masturbation to get rid of dryness. This is your pastor. I'm telling you. This is your pastor. <laughs> Those that are so honest, holy, they are so faithful to their partner and to God. They masturbate too. And masturbation is not sin before God do. Don't let anybody deceive you. Okay, which one is Sin, masturbation or fornication or adultery. You have a husband is living apart, away from you, I mean. And your body needs so many things when it comes to your health. Do you want to choose to go and do it with another man while you are still married to someone, especially, most importantly, pastor? Or you want to masturbate in your room, without anybody there, except your God, and have what will make you feel good, happy, and stuff. You'll be able to go to the pulpit and preach, and to help that people say, you will not be saying jargons on this door, on the thing, when you are not happy, when your the chemical in your brain is not effective. Which one do you want to choose? I suggest you choose masturbation. That is better for you. And if you don't want, you want to choose the other one, let's see who goes to heaven. The man that masturbates and the man that fornicates. Because your pastor will not tell you. They are doing it. They know it's not safe. They will not tell you. They are doing it. I've seen a woman calling me, telling me, a pastor's wife, telling me that my husband don't know how to do it. You know what that means? It says, she said that her husband don't know style sexual style and because of that she divorced her husband and married another man who can do it with styles on time instead of marrying to the man who she thinks she thinks cannot do it to her own satisfaction keep that man and be fornicating or committing adultery I mean she preferred to sin against human, not God, and leave the man and marry another man. That is what happens in the church today. Some pastors are having sex with another man's wife in the church. 
And the woman likes it because what a husband cannot do, the pastor are doing it. All these pastors, they are doing it. Instead of pastor coming to the pulpit and preach and teach people on sexual health, how they can satisfy each other, they will not come to the pulpit and teach you. All they will teach you is don't do this, don't do that, don't fornicate, don't excuse me. And after the church, they bring your wife in, they knock her. You give your wife the best she's supposed to be getting from you. Can you now see the mystery of life? Can you now see what is happening behind the, the, the curtain that you don't see? And here you are in the church sitting down next to your wife. Your wife is looking, your pastor is preaching, but his eyes, it's on your woman. Thinking about what they are going to do after the church. Come on, wake up. I'm not saying this to blackmail anybody. This is what I know that happens in the church. This happened in the church of God. We've seen thousands of pastors falling into this mess, which we later see their mess in public. Yes, this is not new. It's not that we are black. Uh, anyway, I didn't mention anybody's name. I'm just teaching you what I know. And that can help your health as well. That is what I'm, I'm here for. Preventing measure. That is what we are here for. Yes. They make time for masturbation to get rid of dryness because dryness is less likely to occur if you masturbate regularly. If your wife lives apart from you or your husband lives far away from you, if you masturbate, you will not have dryness. Because when you later want to connect with your husband, you will feel the pain. That's what we are trying to prevent here. And when you start having pain during sex, this can lead to any other health problem if it's not taken care of. This is what they need to teach you in church. They won't teach you that. Since the stimulation can lead to increased moisture, you need to masturbate regularly. If you have to do this, I suggest this is another reason for you to have me time. We call it me time on your to-do list. Whatever you are doing every day on your to-do list, put me time. Me time means you want to masturbate. You want to make your, this thing, moisture. You want to make, you want to increase the moisture. You want to make it moist. If you like, do it. If you don't like, leave it. Not be me who experience the pain. It is you that will experience the pain. We are saying it jokingly now. We are saying it when I'm serious. You have to take one. You think I'm kidding. All right. Don't do it. Next likely to happen if you don't have sex constantly is your sex drive may take a hit. Yes, it is possible that your libido will go down a bit during a period of abstinence. If you are not getting it on, you are probably not feeling as sexual as you do when you are doing it on the regular. And that can have an effect on your sex drive. The good news is, once you are back in action, you will likely start feeling more sexy, prompting your libido to rise. But before then, your sex drive may take a hit. And the last one I'm going to mention is, it might take longer to get a rose when you do have sex again. So if you don't want it to so get you on back for a very period of time, if you don't want to have delay in getting a rose, you want to do this regularly. Yes, getting a rose on time, you want to do it regularly. Because after a sex break, it may take more time 
for the vagina to get sufficiently lubricated or for the tissues to fully relax. When you have regular sex, the vagina goes into a rosa mode automatically. Yes, it goes into a rosa mode involuntarily. And it needs more of a wrap up before getting back in the swing of things. Same goes for the penis. Erection issues are not uncommon after a dry spell. Yes, you may probably have problem with your penis getting erected. Yes. Here is what you can do. You want to consider taking things slow and enjoy lots of touching and kissing when you start having sex again. I mean, if you have been abstaining, you know, from sex, if you've had sex for a very long time and you want to come back having it, you want to make sure you take it slowly so that you can enjoy it. You want to Take things slow and enjoy lots of touching and kissing when you go back to that routine. No, giri giri, not gira gira, not every day. You do it once a week with style, with touching, with kissing. Because that's what men one way traffic. No kissing, no touching, no caressing, no bumping, no this, no that. They just go in, they go out. That's it. Ah uh ah. -uh. No. Now she freezer. To she, to mommy, to mu, to tikpada. No. You know why? Increasing the amount of time you spend on foreplay can help vagina tissues relax and produce lubrication. Therefore, you want to make sure you have some stock bought blue on hand again. Or use a lubricated condom. Because you will definitely have pain, dryness, or stuff. So you want to have all this in place before you start. So you have want to take it slowly, gradually. That's it. Now, this I'm about to talk about is um good part of sex yes now let's talk about good part of sex now and i'll begin from relationship help yes relationship help. this is what i'm expecting the churches to tell the congregation they need to talk about relationship health sexual health in churches yes we need this now Relationship health. Regular sex helps you feel emotionally close to your partner. Yes. It makes you feel emotionally close to your partner, which opens the door to better communication. Couples who have sex more often tend to say they are happier than those who get less of it. Yes. Let's take, for instance, if we women, we really need something from our husband, we wait until we are having sex. Then we can say it to his ears. Oh, darling, Remember, you after first round or second rounds, let him go for second round. Then you have given him the food. Then ask, darling, what about the car you want to buy for me? You promised me. When are you going to buy it? If you ask Baba Jebu, Baba Jebu will give you ATM card. Yeah, this is my ATM or my checkbook. Yes. Write any amount. Or the car will be here. In, 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 in a few days. You've given him what he deserves and you are getting the best of it through communication. 
communication is very important and when you can you, you can do that more often when you have sex so having sex bring more and better communication between the two parties between couples it makes you to be acquainted with one another it makes you to feel relaxed with one another you know one another what they really are what they are thinking about what the, what what is going on in their minds they point it out yes so men we when you finish having sex and you ask men oh please what do you want to give me something you promised me blah 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 they, you know what take knife cut my head go and make it money ritual <laughs> they will tell you because they enjoy it. Uh, except if you meet Baba, Baba Jabu will not cut his head and give it to you. Baba Jabu will only give you ATM card or the money where he saves the money. So what I'm trying to say here is the best way to communicate with your partner, with your spouse, is during sex. Oh my waity won't go nipa the ban she than when you are not doing it. I'm telling you, talk to him when you're having sex. Don't tell him anything before you start to. Tell him either when you are doing it, doing that thing, or after you finish having sex. Ask him. Yes. You will get it. But it doesn't have to be every day. Because that's some people, this thing is food to them. If they don't take it every day, some have it twice, three times, they will knock their wife in the morning, in the evening, they will ask their wife to bring this thing and they will knock their wife for a gate. No, I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about this routine. You want to do it once or twice a week. It's enough. Once or twice a week seems to be enough yes doing it every day or every minute every hour every no like day of course it's a food but at the same time it's not food you can eat like you're eating edible food no once or twice a week it's enough oh okay for more this is this is the truth. No matter how long you've been in the relationship, once or twice a week is enough. The next one is the immune system. Yes. Regular sex can also help your body fight off illness. So having it less often might lead to more colds and the like. In one study, college students who had sex once to two times per week were shown to have higher level of a certain antibody. We call it immunoglobulin A. This antibody plays an important role in your immune system. Again, it's called immunoglobulin A. Yes. So if you have it constantly, regularly, I'm not going to say constantly, if I say constantly, regularly means once or twice a week. Because you will hear it now, both are said you should be having sex every day. Not every day, oh. Regularly means once or twice a week, not every day. Emma Domolo Mopa. The next one is memory. Yes, some studies have shown that people who have sex often are better at recalling memories. Men who are much sharp because they have oxytocin and serotonin. The brain chemical. And that 
there are signs that sex can help your brain grow neurons and work better in general. And finally, 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 ladies and gentlemen, a recap of all I've said so far. A lack of sex may also limit your nerve functionality and brain response to stimulation. As a result, many women who experience dry spells with sex often find that it takes longer to reach orgasm and even becomes difficult to get there at all. So, if you know you have been abstaining from sex, whether you are living apart from your partner or you are not married or you are once married, you don't have husband, you need to find a way of making yourself happy. You need to masturbate. You need to connect with your husband if you don't want to masturbate. If you don't have a man, you need to look for some responsible men out there. I must tell you, there are lots of responsible men who are not going to hit you and run. Yes, I can confirm that. So you want to look for a responsible one and do it regularly. That is my own advice. But if you let any pastor or anybody preach to you that if your wife or your husband live apart, you must not masturbate or you must not connect to your husband or your wife. Oh, when she right. They are deceiving you because they are doing exactly what they ask you not to do. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't be deceived. All right, people. Thank you so much for staying with us to the end of the show today. That's all we can share with you on Healthy Living with Bufa Health and Nutrition Tech Show. Let's meet here next week, Sunday, while I bring you another edition on health and nutrition. So then, I remain your host, Betsy Ryan Gafalari, an integrative nutrition specialist. Thank you for watching. See ya next week. Good night.